Hey, Mark here. I just want to give you a quick heads up. So we had some technical issues that resulted in less than ideal audio for this episode. It's still good. It's just not up to the normal MFF standards. However, just know that Justin and Pete from the Rambling Ramblers podcast brought their A game. They brought the hot fuzz with them. And we just had a great time talking about the world's end. So I apologize for the less than ideal audio, but just know that the content is A plus and you will have a lot of fun listening to this. Thanks. Welcome to Movies, Films, and Flicks. I am Mark Hoffmeyer, and joining me are two men who just drank some rain and ate some hummus. It's Justin Gott and Pete Conway. What's up, Mark? Hey, Mark. How's uh, it going? How's that hummus? Terrific. <laughs> Delicious. It doesn't make any sense, though. But it's which brand one. of hummus? Yeah, oh gosh. A lion eating hummus or the character Andy Knightley eating hummus? Hmm. Because lion eating hummus, it's like the chickpea extra protein. And they're like, oh, that is protein. So what else could we talk on there that's extra protein? <sighs> what, else? What, what would a lion, what kind of hummus would a lion like? That's a great question. I think they like lemony hummus, like lemon peppers. Like lemon. Yeah, I, I see that. I see that. And they could spicy. Like, oh, spicy? Oh, yeah. Well, I don't, do, I don't, do you think Andy would like spicy hummus? Probably not, because he seems pretty bland nowadays. Well, we know from the hangover, does, do the tigers, tigers don't like cinnamon or do like cinnamon? <laughs> That's a good question. I can't remember from what uh, what Alan says in that, but I just remember that that happens. I mean, listen, a lion would be pretty pissed if it inhaled cinnamon. You know what that does to people? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We got we'll keep it away from cinnamon. Nothing yeah. that can annoy either of them. So I like yeah. what you said. A nice a nice lemon pepper, some le- like a nice refreshing hummus for them, <laughs> and some rain, and yeah. some rain. There we go. And a couple pita chips. <laughs> so <laughs> got you. <laughs> well, thank you for joining me, y'all. I mean, all right, so I, I guess I got to introduce you. You guys are part of the, the Rambling Ramblers podcast. Uh, you joined me on the Deep Blue Sea podcast when we talked about Deep Blue Sea, the first one, not the second one, which you can listen to now, or the third one. Listen to all of them. Just go back and do all that. But yeah, we, we had a great time on this, and yeah. uh, y'all, y'all are getting your show off the ground, and, and it's rolling right now, doing great. And we figured, hey, let's do a team up. Let's do a, uh, let's, let's get together. I'm just glad to have you on. Yeah, we're we're about thirty some episodes in now. We've got a nice little library in the back, and so we're we're excited. We just we love talking about movies. Pete's seen everything. I've seen not nearly as much, so we basically correct that. Pete tells me what's going on, and and we just have a good time with it. So it's uh, it's fun to be with you, man. Yeah, there is no boring conversation with you. I've decided. So oh, it, right. it, it, <laughs> oh man, you got putting a lot of pressure on me. <laughs> you got to you got to bring it. Oh, man, so so Pete, rank that rank the major Polly Shore movies since you've seen every movie. <laughs> the major Polly Shore. So movies. we're talking Big Four, Encino Man, mm-hmm. Son in Law, In the Army Now. Oh, Big Five, Jury Duty, Biodome. <laughs> okay, I was wondering if you were going to put Biodome in there. I didn't, wasn't sure if it would make the cut. Um, that was a big budget movie. That was that was a large large movie. I guess. Hmm, how would I rank them? I would put, I think I would put Biodome first. I enjoy Biodome. I enjoy the concept of Biodome. Um, <laughs> I'm, Click I'm, that. I'm using enjoy very liberally here. But, uh, <laughs> Have you watched Encino Man and um, uh, Son-in-Law? No? You like it more than those two? I do. I've actually never seen Son-in-Law. I've seen Encino Man, and I, I, I'm not a big fan of Encino Man, I have to, have to admit. Wow. So I haven't seen any of those, which isn't surprising to anyone. However, I have met Polly Shore, and he's a dick. <laughs> uh oh. So he, back in my retail days, he returned a tuxedo. He basically threw it at me and ran out the door as fast as he could. So I'm not a fan of that guy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So Biodome one. <laughs> What's the rest here? Come on. Okay, okay. So all right, so I got Biodome one. Um... Son-in-law, I haven't seen. It's seen a man I hate. What were the, in the army now? And what's the one I'm missing? Jury duty. Oh, jury duty. I think I go in the army now. Jury duty and Cena man. There's a great gag in in the army now where um, David Allen Greer has a scorpion on his back. 
And I love that bit. He's like, there's a scorpion on my back. And then everyone's like, because he's always afraid. Yes. Uh, I yeah. love it. And then people are like, no, there's not. And there actually is a gigantic scorpion on his back. And also, <laughs> Brendan Fraser, his Link character is in Son-in-Law. And he makes cameos in Son-in-Law and in the Army now. I don't remember him. In, I mean, I haven't seen Son-in-Law, but I do not remember him in, in the Army now. That is... So is, there, is it like the same universe then? I don't think so, because either he has clones or twins. Uh, Polly Shore. Is it the Polly Shore cinematic universe? Like, what's yeah, going on here? The PSEU. <laughs> the PSCU. <Yeah. laughs> <You're not the laughs> I mean, what's, what's better, the PSCU or the uh, Cornetto trilogy? Oh, man. There's no question. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> PSCU. Is that a serious question, or do you want me to stick it up here? Yeah, you know, <laughs> I had Edgar Wright on the show last week, and we had a great talk about the PSCU. <laughs> <laughs> he dropped some insights on you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, so that, oh, so World's End. Yeah. I'm so glad that y'all here to talk about it. Y- y'all recommended it for the show. So why'd you want to talk about this movie so much? Well, for starters, I mean, just come out of the gate. It is a top five movie for me, period. It's my favorite comedy. I think it is the single best screenplay ever. I just think it's so tight of a screenplay. Like everything matters and everything comes back and circles back around. And so there's that. That's the first part. The second part is it is incredibly deep. Like there's so much to talk about. And I know you'll have a blast discussing it with us. That's two. Three is it solidified the bromance between me and Pete in 2013. (laughs) Because I happen to be visiting... My cousin, who is friends with Pete, that's how I met Pete, and uh, I got to hang out for the day with Pete because he wasn't working or something. He was just being lazy. Anyway, we went probably and saw lazy. it. It's, yeah, that's, that's why I watch so many movies. I'm lazy. <laughs> yeah, so much time to watch movies. And what we am I going to do? Uh. <laughs> and we went and saw this in the theater together. And so I had a little mandate. From then on, it's just been a super great friendship. It's the beginning of a beautiful friendship, as they say in some old movies. And so it's always meant a little bit more to me because of that, too. Right. Yeah. Did you I get mean, some Starbucks beforehand? After. No, pizza. We, pizza, pizza after. I, I treated Justin <laughs> to pizza afterwards. This oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Then I took him back to my place. <laughs> wild from there and you watch Shaun of the dead bad boys 2 that's and right. point break that's right. yeah yeah you ain't seen bad boys 2 that's what i said to the job we had to watch it immediately <laughs> i i gotta tell you all a funny story so uh, i'm a huge cornetto trilogy fan hot fuzz is actually one of my top five favorites of all time okay. i love Shaun of the dead because i'm a huge zombie nerd so when Shaun of the dead came out i'm like perfect this is amazing i don't even know these guys went and watched it loved it but when this movie came out i was talking to my wife and I, I was like, listen, we're going to do a, a bar crawl before this movie comes out. So like, mm-hmm. there's six bars near this place. We're going to go hit each one. And I was like, well, there's four bars like near this. So we'll go do four. And I was like, well, there's one bar. Let's do one bar because I don't want to do four bars before this movie. I was like, let's do one. And then we just went to the movie. Like, I didn't even do the pub crawl, but I was so excited <laughs> for it. That, like I had like, here's one. We'll walk there. Then we'll walk there. Then we'll walk there. And then I'm like, wait, if I have six pretentious IPAs in me. And I watched this movie at like 9 p.m. I'm out. Like I'm asleep during the credits. You're, you're not making it through that. No. Movie. So I, I, um, I, you know, I, I started from six, went to four, went down to one, then I had nothing. But I'm glad <laughs> I did that because I would have fallen asleep during the world's end. Yeah. You, know? you, you would have been like Oliver and not made it all the way to the end. Oh man. Yeah. Right. That's right. And then talking about Bluetooth. <laughs> so all about- time. About that Bluetooth, I have to mention it because it was so great to find this in the commentary. So Edgar Wright says that after Oliver turns, that the light in the Bluetooth is just like constantly flashing because he's receiving data essentially from the network like at all times. Oh, interesting. And and that's just like such a, that's just what I mean. Like there are so many tiny little details and Edgar Wright is just the man for all of them. And you know what I love most about this movie? It has a $20 million budget. This is a $20 million budget movie. I think, you know, that movie, How Do You Know, with Jack Nicholson, Reese Witherspoon and Owen Wilson, that's like 120 million. And it's just <laughs> right. four people talking in rooms. <laughs> and so you watch this this picture for 20 million bucks. And I mean, it's loaded. I mean, these days, a, a cinematographer, Bill Pope, he's, he's just like he did Dark Man, uh, Matrix, like one of the biggest DPs on the planet. He worked with him on this and he loves working with Edgar Wright because like this movie, you know, what I like about the script being tight. Like it has to be. Because when they get on set, like they, they workshop it. And then once they get on set, they don't change it. Like they just roll right into it. So, I mean, for a $20 million movie, I'd put this up. There's like even like adjusted for inflation with other movies. This is probably like one of the better $20 million movies you're ever going to see. 
Yeah, I, I think that's. A, I mean, to your point, like the the film, especially when you like just the action scenes themselves, the way they're shot, like they're not using you know action oriented actors, but it's like it's all in the filmmaking. It's you know the long tracking shots, the quick editing, the use of music, like all of that. Just it's just you know the mark of a great filmmaker. That's the bigger way it is. Like he he's able to just make it fun and exciting and entertaining without having to you know spend his money on, on a, a whole bunch of crazy oh, man that'd be crap i would love to, i would have loved to have been on this set just because all the setups like so many setups i bet you're just moving 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 i mean oh, oh i love it i would love to see it in motion because there's some big monologues in this it's not like it's it's not like it's an easy shoot right yeah well and then they have all the different bars that they actually shot at and you know yeah. all the, i mean they were on location for a lot of it and it looks better because of that right just oh, going yeah. out getting on the town and walking around yeah. and also it just makes me want to drink beer I mean, of course. Yes, I mean, yes. I know this is stupid to say, uh -oh. but if you, if we went out one day at two o'clock, and we just got twelve Guinness at the bars or like twelve lagers, we could do it. And just like yeah, sat there and drank all day. Yeah, but like no shot or anything like these. These they they never thought this thing through. Well, Gary's kind of a maniac. He doesn't think these things through, does he? Yeah, he's a super maniac. Well, <laughs> you know, he's he's a damaged soul, but he's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. so well, first off. I, I don't think anybody can drink 12 Guinnesses. Those are those are meals in and of themselves. So let's maybe pump the brakes on the dark beer. I mean, like I love four, it. It's like 4%. I know, but I love it. I love Guinness, but I can't drink 12 of them. Like, come on. That's just... It's it's less alcohol content and more you'll be yeah. stuck. You'll yeah, you'd, ga you'd gain probably stuck 20 pounds. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I guess getting back to Gary, too. I don't know if you read this interview, but Nick Frost said that this is the most optimistic movie of their Cornetto trilogy. Yeah. How do y'all feel about that? The ending. I, I think that, that I, I heard that in the commentary, too. Edgar Wright said the same thing. I, I'm good with it. I, I think that, you know, where they settle at the end and kind of how everybody kind of is either a like. So in the case of like Andy, Andy's back with his family. Right. And Peter is with his family and he's like a good dad now. And Stephen and Sam are together out kind of on their own. Uh, who am I missing? Now? Oh, and Oliver's still doing the same thing he was doing before selling houses, even though he's only a mouth, as, as they the say. The race fall. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. like I, I mean, and then, of course, Gary has what he's kind of always wanted, which is his four friends going around and having a good time constantly. And I feel like with people, even though the world ends, presumably, you know, essentially what they what they do, like they all kind of end up in a better place because of it and they've kind of removed some of those things that haunted them before and so i i'm good with it i think it's great well you pete yeah i mean i'm similarly aligned i think it's uh, it, i think especially where they leave gary i think that is uh, the most optimistic um part of it all i guess just because he's able to find his his i don't want to say calling but like it's his some sort of purpose that he you know didn't have as as a as an adult so i in that way yeah i think it is it's fairly optimistic i don't see him winning that fight at the end it's him and those four <laughs> blanks and there's about 30 real like there's not their heads won't explode when they get punched like there's no smashy right. smashy yes. egg man there's, like this they is brought, so. they brought a sword to a gunfight too that's not not the best I did find that funny on on this on this another rewatch was that I saw the gun. One of those guys in that bar does have a gun, and I was like, "That's the first time there was one of the." I feel like that wouldn't be placed in that little Mad Max world, but I guess there is. So is he going into bars and just killing people now? No, <laughs> he's 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 like yeah, he's like trolling. He's like, oh, no blanks. All right, we're gonna go in there and just kill these people. <laughs> that's a tragic ending. Because I, I don't know, I don't think that's what right? he's doing. So I, I, there's not no, to be a brawl. But I, I do have a question for you guys. Do you think the blanks at the end still have the capability to turn other people into blanks or do they just fight? No. Yeah, I don't think they have the because the network is down, but they still got the like the glow. They did yeah. have the glow and the palm I mean, thing. We're probably overanalyzing this, but it. it <laughs> <laughs> well, how would they do it, though? Because I, I thought they got taken like they got replaced. They would get their um, like their saliva. And then they would make another one of them and have them disappear. So they would need to recreate a, a burly bar bar person. Yeah, but I don't think that they're like, I don't think that's their intention. I, I think that literally Gary and the four of them just kind of are walking around doing whatever it is that they're doing. And they just happen upon this bar that has this like policy. And so then they 
he's yeah. upset by. I, I don't think they're out going out of, out of their way to. Yeah, I mean, he, he says massacre of our keeps. Yeah. He says